Seasonal monsoon winds crest Taiwan's central mountain range and whistle across the Hangchun Peninsula. Known locally as the Howling Wind, it sweeps across Taiwan's southernmost peninsula, buffeting villages, crops, flora, and fauna. Nothing escapes its withering reach. The winds blowing at full throttle, people brave the winter chill, gathering in Kanding's Longpan Park to greet Taiwan's first light of the new year. Hung Chun's howling wind whether blowing at a whisper or a roar, reveals its august nature in the fine sand that it disperses through the air and the frothy green waves of the sea. The craggy cliffs and valleys of Longkun underpin her majestic musical score Follow the park's modest wooden walkway and the insights of your park guide to explore the rich foundations of Kanding's geology, culture, and ecology. Cape Erwanbi, Taiwan's southernmost point, is home not only to the island's oldest lighthouse, but also to prehistoric cultural sites that date back several thousand years. The Cape is also home to the protected golden birdwing butterfly. You'll likely see them flitting about as you walk through the area's coral forests. In the park's early days, Coral Park was a labyrinth of meandering trails, helping to keep visitors from becoming lost and to protect the golden birdwing habitat the National Park cut the length of open trails by half. Today, nature has largely recovered, giving sanctuary to resident golden birdwings and hermit crabs. The annual Spring Scream Music Festival opens under roseate late afternoon skies. Indie musicians from around the world converge on Olambi Park. Fans and bands revel together in this one-of-a-kind music event. Once crowds have dispersed and calm returns, the Olambi Lighthouse continues her 10-second cadence, guiding passing ships safely onward to their next destination. The fringing reef between Ulanbi and Maubito hides a brilliantly polychromatic kingdom of living coral. This reef is home to healthy stony and soft coral species, giving Ulanbi its richly diverse reef ecosystem. A colorful panoply of fish and profusion of marine invertebrates add brilliant splashes of color to this enchanted undersea garden.
Under a full spring moon, coral let loose in a frenzied dance of enthusiastic reproduction. Tens of thousands of sperms and eggs fill coastal waters. Fertilized eggs float freely in the current, where they mature into planula and ultimately settle on the seabed as benthic coral, where they will propagate asexually into a new coral community. help protect precious coral resources from pollution and destruction, the National Park Administration holds annual Coral Eco Week activities. Conservation staff and volunteers lead the long-term monitoring and coastal cleanup activities critical to keeping this coral kingdom beautiful for generations to come. Spring arrives, even before the howling wind has relinquished the stage. Purple chinaberry tree blossoms, red lea tree blossoms, and yellow formosa acacia blossoms line the road to Shuding Nature Park. The air fringed with light floral aromas, coaxes butterflies to a seasonal nectar feast. Shuding Village is Kanding's first eco-tour community. Shuding's four current eco-tour routes and tours led by enthusiastic young guides, are building the foundations of self-sustainability. Shuding Village is also a center of Taiwan Sika Deer Rehabilitation. Numbers in the wild have grown to over 2,000 from a population of 22 just three decades ago. The program has successfully reintroduced a species that was extinct in the wild for half a century. In recent years, Sika deer have expanded out into the Yongjing village area. During antler shedding season in April and May, community guides take visitors into the forest to better understand the Sika deer habitat and take in the full eco-tour experience. Under the azure blue waters of summer, tens of thousands of whitebait swim in the Sargassum forests off South Bay. Sun worshippers and water enthusiasts alike converge on Kanding's beaches in summer. Quan Fan Rock, Bai Sha Bay, and South Bay. Beaches, coastal waters, and the sea become one big, lively summer playground. Although they may escape your notice, highly trained professionals keep careful watch over the safety of the multitudes of beachgoers that visit Kendine each day.
kinetic energy of ocean waves fashion shell sand over thousands of years. The shell sand here lies within the Shadal Conservation Area. Protective measures continue to keep this stretch of coral sand in pristine condition. Summer's southwesterly winds bring Baringtonia seeds and other hardy flora to Kending shores. They land, sprout and take root, expanding and enriching the area's coastal forests. The Banana Bay Coastal Forest has the highest land crab species diversity in the world. Nearly 30 species of land crab make their homes here. When it comes time for crabs to release their eggs into the sea, seeing females safely across roadways is a key part of national park conservation efforts. Researchers and local residents set up safe eco-corridors at Gangko, Banana Bay, and other land crab crossing points to protect crabs from traffic and minimize roadway accidents. Restricted lane access, selective road closures, species surveys, and other conservation measures all help see female land crabs safely to the coast to welcome a new generation into the world. The warm waters of the Kuroshio Current bring a steady stream of fish from the south, supporting Hobihu as the Kending area's largest fishing port, respectively promoting sea leisure and recreation activities and resource sustainability. Hobihu recently opened a pleasure craft pier and the Marine Resources Protection Zone. The proliferation of sailboats, glass bottom boats, scuba diving, and other water activities has helped diversify the local economy away from fishing and into sustainable recreation and ecotourism activities. The steamy passion of summer pervades coastal waters and coastal Barringtonia forests and extends into Kending's grassy marshes. Resident frogs keep the summer season hopping with their whimsically husky croaks. The primordial wilds of Mount Nanren provide the best example of a low-elevation tropical deciduous rainforest in Taiwan. The area's 1,200 plant species make Mount Nanren a key plant gene bank. To adequately interpret this gene bank, the National Park rigorously trains its ecological tour guides 
to take visitors on in-depth explorations of the area's forest ecology. The professionalism of this program makes it the National Park's first fee-based guided tour program. During breeding season in May, Mount Nanren and Long Kung Conservation Area are closed to the public for one month, giving animals and plants time and space to answer the primal call of nature. Autumn breezes welcome the return of Chinese goshawks, gray-faced buzzards, and crested honey buzzards to the peninsula. Manzhou Township's Langqiao Raptor Festival celebrates their arrival and welcomes all to witness the arrival of these harbingers of fall. Long Shui community's verdant rice fields are now draped in fronds of golden grain. Residents happily give visitors a feel for the energetic bustle that pervades the harvest of the area's organic rice. After investing over a decade helping train up Shuding Village's now nationally honored team of eco-tour guides. Kunding National Park Headquarters is now working with Gongko, Manzhou, and Yongjing to develop and promote over 40 other distinct eco-tourism itineraries. As well as to train locals to do wildlife and environmental surveys, providing guides with an ever-widening ever more relevant body of knowledge to share with visitors. Community-led eco-tours have already gone mainstream in Kanding. Working to refine programs even further, the National Park sponsors artists in residence to breathe new artistic aesthetics into these communities. The onset of the howling wind at Longwan blows ripples across the lake, marking the start of waterfowl season. Migratory birds arrive from the north, enticing enthusiastic birders to join in the fun. Lower migratory bird numbers in recent years have been attributed to increased tourism, construction projects near the lake, and changes in land utilization in the area. The National Park's ongoing wetlands conservation campaign is working to sustain the habitats and food sources of migratory birds. Maoyan Shihai is a top eight Hengchun Peninsula scenic attraction. To ensure barrier-free access, all trails in Maobido Park are handicap accessible. Now, all visitors can marvel at the coral reefs, wave-eroded rocks, and other spectacular scenery here.
Guishan, not far from Mabito, was in ancient times part of the Hangchun Plateau. However, river and sea erosion later transformed Guishan into an isolated, hilly protrusion. Follow the trail to immerse yourself in nature's embrace. Drink in a sumptuous sunset and experience Guishan's past and present. The howling winds return once more, crossing mountains, crossing the sea, whistling across villages and fields, roaring pell-mell from east to west, blowing from the wilderness into our communities. The howling wind buffets the national park and locals alike. It is woven deeply into the fabric of life. Taiwan's national park system, nearly 50 years young, has created a national park dedicated to preserving biological diversity and promoting ecotourism. Scientific research and environmental education are inspiring visitors to experience for themselves the environmental aesthetics of the Hangchun Peninsula. Heaven and Earth's beauty eclipse the spoken word. Kanding National Park is a precious ecological treasure. Kanding National Park Headquarters strives to execute both its conservation and regulatory responsibility to ensure this treasure is sustained for future generations while meeting the needs of residents and of tourism. Driven by this mission, we work round the clock, watching over Kanding and moving us ever closer to echo sustainability. As the cycle of seasons runs full circle and a new year begins, thousands of hope-filled celebrants converge once again on Kanding to welcome the first rays of a new year. The warm light of dawn brushes every exuberant face as we bask in the magical beauty of our island in the wind. Let's not forget the importance of protecting this beauty for generations to come. Oh, oh, oh.